Welcome back guys, we are back with the 1.4 block I have the crank capped one side, I'm working with the bare block We did a 40 thou rebore on this engine, reason being because I had brand new 40 thou 1.4 pistons laying around And this just ran into a, in a car like, you could say like a week and then it was taken out due to a bearing knock So I did a 40 thou, the block was standard I did a 40 thou rebo, got the block back. I didn't remove the main caps. The main caps that's on the block because they were still looking in perfect condition. Most probably the people that owned the, uh, the car before me just replaced all the bearings and stuff and then they were still getting piston slap. Meanwhile, the piston slap was because you need to rebo the block. So I still got the caps on and I'm not going to remove it. I have some brake cleaner here. I'm just going to spray it up and then I'm going to use a clean microfiber cloth. Okay, this one is not clean, but I'm going to use a clean microfiber cloth, give it a good wipe, put some oil on it and continue the process. But before I go any further, I want you to have a good look at this block. What I'm pointing here, this is the part that goes into the gearbox side. And this side here is where your cam belt and stuff goes how you would know that now because the, the oil pump sits here the oil pump part is more towards the gearbox side so we are starting like this number five number four number three number two number one that's how my caps are going to go and let me show you guys if you look here this is one of my caps it's not clean but this is number five so obviously number five is going to go here another thing what i wanted to mention if you look very closely at these bearings can you see there's a notch here and then there's a notch here notch here all of them have notches and if you look at my cap there's a notch there as well so these notches need to line up the book the bearing that's on the block and the bearing that's on the cap needs to line up and the notches need to face towards the oil pump remember i told you guys this is the oil pump so the notches need to face that so when you're putting it just bear in mind that you have to have your bearings locked here and you have to have a lock there and it goes down like that so five four three two one all the notches on both of the bearings need to face towards the oil pump side when you get your bearings, you're going to have a bearing that has a hole in the center. Can you see that there? And can you see on the block itself, on the block, it, on the engine's block, you're going to see that we have oil, oil ports. One, two, three, four, five oil ports. So this half of the bearing has to go, the hole has to go there. So oil will flow in the crankshaft. And then the other half of the cap is a plain bearing. I know the bearings look a bit scuffed up, but I felt it and there's no physical way. And usually the main bearings don't doesn't give you much of an issue. Obviously, if it was worn out, I would see blue score marks and stuff. Usually your big end bearings give you the drama. But obviously, I don't advise anyone else to do this. It's best that you go and uh, purchase, you know, brand new main bearings. Okay, so I'm starting with number five, right? I just want to give it a good clean. Some brake cleaner on the spray inside the port. In, in case the ports are you know, messed up. Then make sure take a clean microfiber cloth. Try to use microfiber because you don't want no fibers like going inside that bearing and getting stuck there. and I'm going to continue the process for all of those okay so we have our crank here just gonna get one more wipe down now it's very important on your crank if you look here there's oil journals make sure that those journals are not blocked especially if you have your crank like laying around somewhere for a while make sure that the journals are not blocked 
make sure that your hands are clean which mine's not clean but i just want to give it a nice wipe and i already checked this crank if uh, there's any like you know rough spots or scores and everything seems to be good i'm just gonna give it a wipe this brown mark you see here is just from they had the wrong cap on they had the wrong bearing on one of the main caps but sometimes it comes like that from factory when you're buying new bearings okay guys the crank is clean make sure that it is clean just remember if you are doing this please put on your main bearings i am just doing this because i can see the condition is okay but i don't advise you guys to do it now i have some engine oil very cheap engine oil because it's just to i don't have uh like grease i don't know what assembly lube to put on these bearings so i'm going to use a bit of engine oil and make sure that you can see it just pour some on the bearing be generous with it but make sure don't put it on the, inside the pots because i spent some time cleaning the threads because you cannot have liquid in the threads but uh putting some oil there basically on all the bearings because when i put the crank on i cannot have it on like a dry surface Remember guys, be generous when you are um, pouring the oil. Okay, we have our oil there. Put a little bit more on the side. And then I have my crank. Remember guys, this side here, this is for your pressure plate and your flywheel and your clutch. The side that I'm holding with this end, that's for your crank pulley and stuff. So, so you guys know the direction. Like so. I want you guys to just give it a quick turn with your hand to make sure that it's spinning freely. Put some more oil. Turn the crank by hand and see if it spins freely. Got my nineteen more socket, got the ratchet. Okay guys, you saw that I was able to manually turn the crank, but no, all the bolts are just tightened, not tightened, it's just placed flush down. Now I have my torque spanner here. I set it to 65 newton meters. I'm going to start from the inside. 
going out. I'm like 65 years here, baby. <laughs> so, yeah, guys, that's at 65 newton meters. I'm going to talk down. <laughs> okay guys finally i had to make my camera lady over here <laughs> help me to hold the block because when i was talking it the block was moving and i have it on a wooden table so anyway all the bolts are talked down remember i told you we're starting from inside going out so how i did it one two three four five six seven eight nine ten Basically, you don't have to do it that way, but I suggest you do it that way. Talked all the all the bolts to 65 newton meters, and then I went double checking. How I double checked, I started 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, just to make sure all are talked. And obviously, these are not brand new bearings. Like I explained in the start of the video, it would have been a bit harder to turn if it was new, because the bearings are new and much thicker, but like you can see, I'm turning the crank. And there's no side to side play because we have our two thrust washers here. But I had, remember, this is 40 thou pistons. Gave them a good clean. Like you can see here, I got Hastings bearings, uh, sorry, Hastings rings. And this is a very good quality ring, so purchased a set for all i completed can you see brand new rings here and one two three so like you guys know these three pistons here was used but not for a long time 40 thou and then i was missing one so i bought a brand new one here let me show you guys some things on the brand new piston right you have your scuts then you have your ring glands, then you have your oil, um, where the oil control ring, you have your oil ports, must know, oil comes out from here, from these ports, and then your top of your piston. So the first thing I wanted to show you is if you're reusing your pistons, like what I'm doing here, I want you to take some carburetor spray and spray through these ports or brake cleaner whatever you have just to make sure that it's clean give the piston a good clean okay guys i didn't want to go in too detail how to install the piston ring because i think i did that in another video so just scroll through my channel and look for that video uh, and i don't want to repeat the same thing over and over so this is me just putting all the piston rings in and then i'm going to show you guys how to install a wrist pin I have my corn rod inside the corn rod here there's an oil pot i gave that a good spray with some spray cleaner give it a good wipe make sure it's clean you don't want any dirt here take my wrist pin give my wrist pin a good clean has to be super clean guys because you don't want your wrist to get damaged not wrist pins your caps the begin caps some persuasion to come out okay this next step is very important right to worry about all that now but the reason why it's so important can you see the notch the notch there and the notch here so it always faces the front of the engine i would say the cradle of the engine this is the front of the engine so if you're standing in front of the car this needs to face it like so remember front is where i am currently so when you're putting the piston which is my piston here 
wood and the arrow facing that side to your cam belt and the con rod this is the front of the engine front front of the engine and cam belt side so that's how my piston's arrow needs to be so i'll just put the piston over like so make sure front of the engine make sure the arrow needs to face the cam bell side and i'm going to send that a spin through have my clean wrist pin okay i'm gonna do this off camera but i need to pick it up and i'm gonna try to feed it there much easier if you have circle pliers but now i'm just gonna try with my hand to you know push it through and lock it You see that guys one gudgeon pin is in but i'm gonna do this for all but please no matter what always make sure that this thing is tight and locked into position check it 101 times reason being because if this comes out your piston will basically try to run itself through the block so just double check on the, on the gudgeon pin i'm gonna turn it around and do the same thing on the other side Okay, that is why I'm saying, guys, put your finger on it because you don't want you to hit your face. It's locked. So what you would check the side to side player is normal. It's normal play. But you don't want where you like you know push it against each other push and pull push and pull you don't want to hear no knocking noises that means your gudgeon pin is damaged okay guys we'll be putting our first piston in i gave the ball a good wipe down good wipe with uh, some brake cleaner make sure there's no dirt and i'll have to also give the crank a clean okay guys the first thing that i want to do i turn the motor around i want to clean Clean up the um, make sure that there's no dirt. Remember that's where the dipstick is, that's the front of the motor, so this is number one. <clears throat> now I want this notch here to be facing. The front where the dipstick is i'm not sure if you can see that and there's my cam belt on the side here so the notch needs to be facing to that end to the front and remember the arrow okay this person doesn't have an arrow but the arrow needs to be facing to the cam belt side which is that side there all the rings needs to be correct then I'm going to oil this up. I'm going to put oil. I have my oil here. I'm going to put oil around all the rings. Then I'm going to compress it with a ring squeezer. And then I'll show you the next step. 